All right, that's a silly song. I always think of They Might Be Giants, Particle Man, when talking about this subject wave particle duality. Um, so I just want to review uh, the learning goals here really quick. Um, so uh, let's see here, my highlighter. Okay, be familiar with the SI units discussed in class. Yep, that, so that was part of our review, okay? Be familiar with the name constants, Boltzmann, Planck, and H-bar, which is H divided by 2 pi. And um, in this lecture today, you're going to see why we use this H-bar constant. Uh, be able to convert energy into various units, kind of as I went through in the first lecture. Be familiar with the four molecular modes of motion and how they connect to the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. Uh, be familiar with black body radiation, heat capacity of solids, and wave particle duality, including all of those kind of um, what I would call your physics review, things like interference, uh, diffraction, etc. Um, so it looks like we've finished um, about half the chapter. We've definitely finished about half the learning goals. However, there's still several more lectures to go. So a lot of these other learning goals are going to take us um, several lectures to connect. Okay, so I'm going to put that away. Uh, and here we go. We're starting uh, with the Schrodinger equation. Okay, so at first the Schrodinger equation appears very simple, um, almost too simple. Um, as we shall see, it's going to blow up to something very complicated in a hurry. Um, so here's what we have in the Schrodinger equation. So Greek letter psi, okay, P-S-I, technically it's a lowercase psi. Um, that represents the wave function, okay? Um, and we're going to talk ad nauseum about what the wave function is. Um, this H hat, um, so I'll write like H hat. So that's the Hamiltonian operator, okay? And then E, this is the energy of the system. So the Schrodinger equation is what we call an eigenvalue equation. And so as I mentioned in the previous lecture, there's a lot of um, German language influence in quantum mechanics. So eigen, um, that's the Deutsche for single, okay? Single valued equation. And so what, what does that mean? So what is an eigenvalue equation? And furthermore, what's a Hamiltonian operator? So this is kind of a level of mathematics that is not um, straightforward. And for many of you, this will be the first time that you're seeing this type of mathematics. So in these eigenvalue equations with Hamiltonian operators, the operator operates on the wave function. Okay, so I'll represent that by drawing an arrow. So the operator operates on the wave function and it returns, so that's what I'm gonna put in place of this equal sign. It returns the energy of the system, which is our single valued um, component. It's our eigenvalue, okay? So I'll underline eigenvalue and say that is E. Not only does it return the eigenvalue, but it also returns the original wave function. So if you're looking at this and thinking, why algebraically does the wave function not just cancel, right? It's the same as the left and the same on the right. That's because of the mathematics involved um, in, in this Hamiltonian mathematics and eigenvalue equations, okay? So what is a Hamiltonian operator? Well, here are examples of a whole host of different types of operators. So we shall see that word Hamiltonian, that's specific to operators used in quantum mechanics. You're already familiar with operators. So for example, the position operator, we could call X, so our X scale. Um, and if we apply the position operator, look, it's just multiplying the function by X. So that's, that's what we would do. If we replaced this Hamiltonian operator with the position operator, and we said, you know, X hat, 
operating on psi, then it would return an eigenvalue, and that eigenvalue would be the position, not the energy, but it would be the position because we use the position operator. Or similarly, if we were doing this in um, uh, polar spherical coordinates, right, we would use r, the radius, okay? So here we can see the momentum operator, and that gets a little bit more complicated. That's negative i, imaginary number, times h-bar, times the partial derivative with respect to x. So, uh, and if I continue on here, I'll just describe this. Um, so we can see that's, you know, if it's only an x, if it's in three dimensions, um, you can see we're going to get into some rather complicated math, okay? Um, and then what's going to be most useful for us in this beginning, you know, couple weeks of quantum mechanics is the kinetic energy operator, okay? And you can see that's negative h-bar squared divided by two mass, two times the mass, and the second derivative with respect to position. So the way we would apply this kinetic energy operator is we'd have to follow the order of mathematics. So first, we would take the second derivative with respect to x of the wave function, okay? After we take that second derivative, then we would multiply by negative h-bar squared over 2n. And after we carry out that operation on psi, we would get back the single valued, the energy, real number, okay? And we would get back the original wave function, all right? So again, this is mathematics unlike what you've seen before, okay? We also have the potential energy operator. And for now, we notice we're just using symbolic V. V is a function of X. As we advance in the class, we will replace this potential energy operator with an equation. Um, we can also use just a constant. If we had just constant potential energy, um, then the potential energy operator would be to just multiply that constant by the wave function, okay? Um, and of course, our total energy operator is going to be the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, right? The total energy, okay? So all the same, whether we're using kinetic, potential, or total, we apply this operation on the wave function and we return either just the kinetic energy, just the potential energy, or the total energy, okay? So let's move forward.